Okay, so now we've changed the pins around and I've figured out how to get audio working. So let's save this um, through here, file, save. Um, and now let's make sure that, where is this here? Make sure that we update the PCB um, document. So it will show us what the changes are in our schematic. Okay, takes a while always, of course. Compiling project. Okay. Okay, we'll just do automatically create component links and figure out yet exactly what that does. There are some links that were modified. And, okay, did that do anything? Finding matches, it's still working. Okay, here are the changes. So it says, okay, our U51 um, component, pin 9, was changed from DT7. Um, that was the connection that was removed. And then if we scroll down, we'll see that there was a connection added somewhere as well here. U15 1-9 pin 9 is now DT0 instead of DT7. So we'll just, you know, validate all those changes. It's all okay. And then we'll have to execute them. Okay, all of those changes have been executed. Um, I'll figure out later what these these other changes, this modification of the parameters are. Um, Okay, and then we can close this, and as you can see now, all of those output channels here towards the, the P1 connector are um, are parallel, so they're not crossing each other anymore. So if I now were to select this one, um, try to add the route um, on, uh, on that component. Okay, select component, yada yada. Um, okay, it's going to give me some warnings there, I guess, or some messages at least. But that auto routing should go a lot easier now. Let's give it a minute. If, incidentally, if you have the whole board, if you let it auto route, it takes about four hours or five hours um, to do the full, you know, full number of 516 connections. Of course, now we're only going to do those connections through U51. Let's see how long this takes. So yeah, that's something, you know, the, the pin reassignment is uh, um, something we're going to have to do for, uh, for all of those um, transceiver boards. This one here, uh, let's see, can I scroll up a bit? So all of the ones that are on the back are going to have to go to the front, have to go, so first flipped, then rotated by nine, 180 degrees, and then um, reassigning the pins, all of those pins that are um, the eight channels on uh, um, on that, uh, that board, or on that component. Okay, so in the background, let me close this here. Um, you can see that it's routing now and you know those routes are are looking a lot more sensible than uh, they would um, otherwise so and it's working here on the ones to the FPGA um, those are also going to look a lot more sensible so let's see created a via here because there's of course still some stuff that goes to the back here so uh, that's another thing we're going to have to change those kind of unterminated vias that you see here these go to um, the ground so usually what we do is put um, on one side of the board, just um, pour um, a full ground, um, a ground plane there. So then uh, um, that's, uh, that's a complete ground plane and uh, that makes it easier to, uh, to design things for that board. Okay, good. So let's, uh, let's save this and, uh, and Oh, okay. Did I click something wrong? No, these are the air wires for all the other things. Okay, good. So let's save this. That's our new um, 
our new boards uh, so now we just want to do something similar for one two three four and then five six connectors on this top back plane connector and at the bottom here is another two or three right one two three um another thing that you do just the components with respect to each other and you go to component actions or sorry align horizontal centers for example with respect to the horizontal center of this one now all of those components will have gotten their um, their horizontal centers aligned I mean, they were already aligned uh, but now they're not crooked so let me show you if I move this one for example let's say we want to move that a little bit closer there and to demonstrate what I mean with this horizontal alignment I'll just move it over um, a little bit like this so this may not be the nicest board so by doing this alignment align horizontal centers it will actually move that bottom one in line with the with the top ones. Um, the next thing I can do, because I have more, have less room between the bottom two and the top one, um, I can do align and distribute vertically, so it uh, kind of makes the distance between all of them the same. And then finally, let me make it all nice and clean by selecting the top here and then selecting these resistors oops oh, didn't want to do that control z okay so let's now do that again so at the top no nope. i don't want to move that one It's like from the bottom then. There. So I'll move those to the middle here again. And what I'll do next is I'll just select all of those resistors. There we go. And I'll align those as well. Align horizontal centers and I'll use as a reference this one here and that one looks like it's pretty much in the center and then just to make it look neat let's also align um, or distribute this vertically so if we look at that now we've got a nice uh, nice looking uh, board here um, of course if we look at that you know this one looks a little bit interesting because it seems like this one uh, um, would, would fit better if it was actually the other way around. So let's see if we can rotate this one um, over, let's see, where is it here? Edit, move, rotate, and let's change that to 180 degrees. If we change this component by 180 degrees, did that change something? Yep, that looks a little bit better. Um, and so let's move that one also to the center here. We're, we'd have to do our, uh, our alignment and our distribution again. Um, so we could do that just to clean up the board a bit. Same thing here. Um, actually, this seems to be happening in a fair number of places here. There may be a reason for that. Huh, I wonder. Um, but uh, something to keep in mind. So, yeah. So, now uh, we got to do that on all of them. Good. I'll end the video here then.